You want a sports sedan. You've got about 50 to 60 grand to spend, and you want a six cylinder engine, not a four, that makes at least 300 horsepower. Well, these are just two of your choices. The brand new 2021 Acura TLX Type S with a turbo six, or the refreshed 2021 Lexus IS350 F Sport. They both got all wheel drive, cost about $54,000 with a lot of nice performance hardware and luxury. Acura says it's precision crafted performance. Lexus says that if you buy an LS, you'll experience amazing. So let's see if the hype on these cars is real. This is Palmer Motorsports Park in Palmer, Massachusetts. It's one of the best private courses in the Northeast. And best of all, there's no traffic, no people tailgating you out of the grocery store, no speed limits. I've driven slower versions of each car within the past year. So what do we have here? the first turbo V6 ever in a normal Acura. It shares two things with the twin turbo V6 in the NSX, the metal used for the crankshaft and reliability. Of all the things a car engineer working on a high performance engine would rank, reliability wouldn't make the top three, but not at Acura. A track like Palmer, which we're at right now in Massachusetts, is pretty technical. There's not a lot of runoff. There's this one straight right here that I'm on and then you're turning. <laughs> the straight isn't even all that straight. So what it really does is it puts a car's suspension and chassis to the test. It doesn't matter what you're driving. And we've driven a lot of different cars on this track. It's been great. You get elevation change, you get hills, you get blind turns. Acura doesn't sell the TLX Type S as a track car. They position the Civic Type R, the Honda, more along that vein. That's a front wheel drive car. I've driven that car, it's a lot of fun. But the added boost of this V6, they spent a lot of time developing it because the peak torque comes on at 1400 RPM, which is right off the line. So when you're on the road, you can just get up and go. Just like that. <laughs> In a Type S, you get an Acura exclusive engine. It's a three liter single turbo V6. Now it's got 355 horsepower and 354 pound feet of torque. And not another Honda is gonna use it. Honda and Acura share a lot of parts, but Acura has promised us that this is going to remain true to this brand. They're trying to elevate it, increase the performance, the exclusivity, the same engine is also going to be available in a big SUV, the MDX Type S. So if you don't want a sedan, <laughs> you can bring the whole family along on vacation and do this. The all-wheel drive has a lot of traction, but what helps is the rotation. That's what makes you feel like you're in a rear-wheel drive car with more balance. So you can enter this turn, push it, push it, push it. The inner tire there is essentially changing the trajectory of the car, tightening the line, making it feel more balanced, making it feel more accurate. And they do that mechanically. A lot of cars these days are using brakes, so it'll break a wheel to slow it down. Acura doesn't use that. It does it the old fashioned way. It's a more expensive system and they've developed it for years, really since the mid 2000s. And you can really feel it operate. It's very transparent doesn't get in the way and it definitely elevates a sports sedan like the TLX. On the Type S there's an exclusive Sport Plus mode. On the regular TLX it only goes up to Sport. Now that does a few things. It definitely makes the throttle a bit sharper. The adaptive dampers are a little firmer and there's an active exhaust with the baffles that always stay open. That is my kind of jam. The way this 10-speed automatic is programmed, it's excellent. Now I'm using the paddle shifters because I just want to hear the engine breathe a little bit more, but the programming is excellent. Ratios are really well spaced. And the snap of the upshift, it's great. It really is. definitely like the brake feel on this car. They are certainly upgraded and brakes, I can't stress enough how much it matters, not just on a track, but on the road. 
because in a panic stop situation, you want the most you can get. In a car like this, yeah, they look pretty, but they do a really good job. Yeah, really nice balance through those S's right there. We're coming into a decreasing left turn. The radius is getting a little sharper. I'll give it a little bit more, a little bit more. Excellent. Now it's clear this is not a totally fair fight because the IS350 F Sport doesn't have the track handling package that would give the adaptive dampers and bring it more up to speed with this car, but you can't have everything. We also don't have the IS500 at this time, which might beat this car. I don't really know, even with that V8 versus this Turbo 6. I'm gonna have to let you guys tell us once you start test driving and maybe buying some of them. But you can definitely tell that the engineers spent a lot of time on a racetrack because it is very balanced. It's just, I keep using that word because it is. Um, car just feels super stable. A little bit of swirliness there, but the tires are getting hotter. It's still very predictable. That's what you want in a sports sedan. You know, you don't want things to be on one way and then pff, the next turn, woo, <laughs> you spun out. That's not how this one goes. Though they really accurate, I gotta say, it's been a long time developing this car, promising that we were gonna get an excellent sports sedan. And it's right up there. It really is. Is it the absolute best out there? No, well, it's certainly among the top five, I'd say. There's not as many sports sedans like there used to be. But versus that IS, man, dynamically, kicks it in the pants. This is not the IS 500 with the five liter V8 making over 470 horsepower. It's not the IS 350 F Sport with the F Sport handling package. Sorry, deal with it. This is what we have. I know it's not a completely fair fight, but Lexus did put a lot of re-engineering into the chassis, and that's on every IS350, regardless of what is going on the tires or the adaptive dampers, both of which we don't have, regular all seasons. We don't have the Sport Plus or a limited slip diff. So all those things really would make a much bigger difference, I think. However, I've already driven the IS300. I've driven this IS350 on the road, and the chassis is pretty good. It's sorted. Now it's smaller than the TLX. It certainly feels less wide when I'm in here. The wheelbase, everything. I don't have the exact measurements right off the top of my head, but just getting in this car, I feel like it's more snug. And that just helps me feel, whoa, you know? Oh gosh, yeah, no, it's <laughs> not gonna be able to push this car like the Type S. Certainly not with these all seasons. I think you could do a lot more with the handling package, it's just hard to find one. And here's the other thing that bugs me about the F Sport, because you don't get, unlike the Type S, which comes one way, the only option is summer tires. With the F Sport, you have to not only check the box for the handling package, but you have to get the rear wheel drive version to get the limited slip differential and the eight speed automatic. This one, even if it had the handling package, is a six speed. It's like, who uses six speed automatics anymore? That might not seem like a big deal, but the gaps and the gears are just so noticeable. And the Acura is just firing off one, two, three, four, five. It goes all the way to 10. The spacing is so much tighter, which means it reacts quicker. This thing is just like a much older automatic and it does sound good. It's a three and a half liter V6 making 311 horsepower and 280 foot pounds of torque. But it doesn't quite have the same immediacy as that Acura Turbo 6. It just doesn't. It's just a shame that even though this is a significantly refreshed car, Lexus didn't do anything to the powertrain. I really wish they did because this chassis is able, it's willing. I don't have as much communication through the steering as I'd like, but it's still, yeah, it's still predictable, it's nimble. A little bit more body roll though, and again, this is only on the IS350 without the adaptive dampers. So I'm just going to ignore some of that and just imagine that it was a little stiffer for comparative purposes. But there's no getting around the powertrain, it's dated. So I'm around this turn here. There's no sport mode even, I'm, I'm in sport mode, but there's no sport mode on the transmission. So 
it just has to really fight to downshift. And then when it goes on, there's not that much power. Yeah, 311 horsepower is good, but you have to wind this thing up to feel anything. As I'm filming this right now, there is a Ferrari 458 waiting to get on the track. So I will make this as quick as possible, you know, which is kind of a big ask in the IS 350 because the transmission doesn't really respond that well, but it tries. It tries really hard. It does sound good. That's a nice intake snarl. There's no exhaust to speak of, but the intake is good. And in a Toyota engine, you know it's going to last. That's the same thing about the Acura. If there's one thing you can know about buying a Japanese luxury sedan versus, say, German or British, that you're probably not going to be paying that much to own it long term. In terms of fuel economy, they're not that great. This is 19 city, 26 highway. The Acura is 19 and 24. You pay big bucks for the six cylinder engines, well, you're going to pay big bucks at the gas pump. But you knew that. Sounds like I'm complaining a lot. This car is still really fast. I'm not going to lie. It, it, it moves. It's just that when you compare it to the Acura, you can tell that that version is really meant for performance-minded drivers. This is more for someone who wants to look good, be comfortable on the commute, but doesn't really care about you know, how well those tires are sticking or how the road feels. That's, you know, that's not really the point. However, the IS500, which is going to be out any day now, by the time this video comes out, that's going to take things to another level, I think. I think that engine is going to transform the car really well. As it stands, the IS350 is a good car, but it definitely shows its age next to the Type S. These two aren't track cars, but they can hang, and visually, they exude speed and power, even though they'll spend most of their time doing very ordinary, boring things. But why be boring? If you're choosing a sedan, you're choosing to be different. They're the polar opposite of a crossover and SUV, and they're not nearly as popular right now like they were in the 90s. Now, this is what makes the Type S different than a regular TLX. Particularly the front is where you'll notice the difference. Gloss black grille, special chin spoiler with more aerodynamics, no fog lights, and instead extra air intakes because it's a secondary radiator in this car to actually cool it, unlike the Supra, which has a lot of fake vents everywhere. Now on the sides, you'll see this one has this special wheel and tire combination. These are 20 inch wheels that are patterned off of the NSX supercar and they come with Brembo brakes and summer tires. All seasons come standard, but for 800 bucks, you really should do this. That's what transforms this car entirely. If you remember the 2008 TL Type S, you'll recognize the big four exhaust tips on this new TLX Type S. That's the best way to spot one of these, plus the black deck lid spoiler. And if you're really daft, the Type S badge. Now over here, the Lexus, not much changes from an IS300 to an IS350 F Sport. You get a black mesh grille with a different texture, some extra side intakes here. If I had the F Sport handling package, the wheels would be BBS, those would be darker, but there's really not visually much else going on. It is hot and it's been entirely refreshed for 2021, so totally different than before, but there's not much happening here. In the back of the IS350, well, you get a deck lid spoiler, some extra black trim, and that's basically it. I do like this though. This thin band here is new for 2021. That's how you could recognize this version versus the previous generation. You don't get the stacked exhaust tips like you'll find on the IS500. That's the one I really want to drive. I like this white and black interior. It's very comfortable. It is truly a Lexus in that regard, but it is looking dated and old. These door panels, the way this molding is in here, this is a design from 2013. So it feels like they just haven't put enough updates in this vehicle. Even though there's a nice new touchscreen, there's not much else going on here. And for almost 60 grand, remember, this car can go well above that. Not exactly what I'd call the epitome of luxury right here. Now the instrument panel, just like it was in the LFA supercar, is still a magic show. The tachometer can swivel across to reveal a larger screen where you can adjust options and show more vehicle data. The tach can change color and the design to match the driving mode. It can also change the red line based on the engine temperature. As the engine warms, you see less red. 
The infotainment is much better than the older models. There's a touch-enabled screen that's wider and closer to the driver. But the interface is still old, it's confusing, and it's just bad. And it is really tight in here. I'm 5'11", but I just, my elbows, my knees against here pressed. I calf and ankle actually are impacted by this transmission tunnel poking out under here. I know this is a compact sedan, but it's just a little too compact. This is not a family Lexus. It's a personal Lexus. It's really built for two and really only two people sitting up here. But the people who do sit up here, you really could travel for a long time because I can't stress enough how comfortable these seats are. I buy it just for these alone. The TLX feels one size up. Now the back seat doesn't have much leg room, but there's definitely more headroom than in the Lexus, front and rear. It just feels wider and a bit airier in here. The Type S has an optional white leather interior. I'd really like to see that one because it contrasts better than this all black interior, especially with the faux suede inserts and the stitching. But no matter what color, you get a flat bottom steering wheel and white face gauges. But the TLX feels new and crafted inside, like this center stack where wood or aluminum curves along the side, hugs it, blends into thin ambient lighting that changes with the driving mode. It's nice. Uh, uh, nope, can't reach it. It's not a touch screen. It's a touch pad controlled screen. Now, how that works is basically where your finger lands on the pad is where this screen is supposed to highlight it. It works pretty well, actually. We hated it when we started testing hackers with this system a few years ago. Now it's pretty good because it actually is simple, it's intuitive, and even though it doesn't work as well with touch-enabled devices like Apple CarPlay, well, it actually is still easier to use than the Lexus, which has a touchscreen and a touchpad. All in all, this interior is just a little bit roomier, not by much than the Lexus, but just enough to just feel more inviting. One of the best values among sporty, compact luxury sedans is the Genesis G70, which wasn't available for this test. Another one as a value, and believe it or not, is the BMW M340i. And then there's the TLX Type S. For 54,645 as tested, you get a lot of car for not much more money than a loaded four-cylinder TLX. A comparable BMW or an Audi S4 costs at least six grand more. Mercedes AMG C43 can't be had reasonably for under 60K. The Cadillac CT5 could be great, but feels cheap inside. The Infiniti Q50 Red Sport costs more and is just as old feeling as the IS350, except Lexus has a much fresher exterior. But age is a harsh reality with this little Lexus. Even at 53,990, the powertrain and the interior just can't keep up with the Acura. Even if it had the handling package, it'd be thousands more. Both these cars are gonna raise your monthly payment by a lot. Now you could buy the slower versions, but what's the point of that? So among these two, the Acura wins. The powertrain, the interior, the technology, the refinement, it's a fully baked car. The Lexus is good, but it does not compare to the Acura, especially at this price. Now the IS500, that might change my opinion, but at this price, the IS350 is just a bit too far behind to keep up with this car. So what do you think? What cars do we compare next? You tell us and go to cargurus.com because that's where these cars live. There's listings all over the place. So go out, buy something fun. Tell us what reviews you want to see next. Subscribe. We'll see you next time.